Now when it comes to making perfect mashed potatoes, you can be a mashed potato optimist or you could be a mashed potato pessimist. I mean, it's a bit like saying the glass is half full or half empty. Oh, now it's empty. What? Oh, I, I'm a realist. That's, that's what wrong then. Okay, mashed potatoes, three ways today. I mean, isn't it interesting? You could literally give a home cook or a cook, a chef, and a Michelin star chef the same ingredients to make mashed potatoes, and you could get mashed potatoes. An exciting, shall I say, the chef would make some lovely mashed potatoes, and then you could literally, from a Michelin star chef, you could get mashed potato brilliance that sends you into mashed potato heaven. That's what we're gonna cover today. And by the end of this video, I will also reveal you the secret of the famous Parisian mash. And in between everything there is to know with mashed potatoes. And yes, yes, on the way there, we will be making the best mashed potatoes you can. So let's first do the home cook version where you boil your potatoes. And that's where most of us get it wrong. I mean, you cannot boil your potatoes if you are sort of use your classic mashing potatoes. Why? Well, those varieties are super starchy, and when you boil them in water, they will start to roughen up, basically starting to fall apart, release a lot of the starch, while at the same time they absorb lots of water. By the end, your mashed potatoes will be really tasteless because they lost a lot of the flavor and nutrients, and will be really heavy and watery and cloggy. So if you boil your potatoes, you need to use firm fleshed potatoes. And what's a starchy potato? Well, you take a potato, you cut it in half, and you rub it against each other for a few seconds. And if it does not stick, it's a starchy potato. And you do need to cook it like we do in version number two. If it sticks, then you can boil it. But you still don't recommend it that because boiling is simply too aggressive. Plus, you lose a lot of nutrients, starch, and flavor. However, if that does not convince you, then let's boil them in water. I'm, I'm happy to go for it and finally convince you once and forever. But when you do that, you need to cut them in an even diameter, not too small so they don't have a lot of cooking surface, so they don't lose too much starch during cooking. Now this version, although it's the most common, is actually the most difficult one, as well as the most tasteless one. The one with the worst texture. You will agree when you watched version two or three. Anyway, when adding the potatoes to the water, the water needs to be boiling hot, not cold. So the starch chelates immediately on the surface and it traps the starches within the potato. Salting, yes, that helps because salted water has a different density than fresh water, which is within those potatoes. And that helps the potatoes with not absorbing too much water, at least at the beginning of the cooking process. Oh, I mean, there's so many things to consider with those boiling potato mash, you know? So make sure you don't overcook your potatoes and neither you undercook them. You cook them too long, the potatoes start to fall apart and soak themselves full with water. You cook them too short and then you struggle to mash them and they become really gluey and gooey like, you know, plaster. Now, if you got it all right, you will see the boiling water is still pretty clear. If it looks like that, really unclear, then that's not so great because a lot of the starch has gone into the boiling water and it has been lost from potatoes forever. Then strain them, mash them, however you want it. You can add some milk or some cream or some butter. Ideally, the milk should be boiling hot because that helps with the binding. Salt you got from the water and here's your version one. Now a few tips you can come across books or so is to let them steam out in the oven or cook them in the pan for a few minutes to get rid of more of some of the absorbed water which is great but it will not make up for the loss of flavor and starch so that was version one the stuff everyone does but not my favorite too much work too little return so let's get into version two and that's how a really good chef would do it i mean i could tell you stuff about about potatoes seriously I could but we'd be here still for another hour or so 
It's a fascinating topic, especially if you're Irish. Anyway, I keep it to the very basics. I mean, if I would be a really, really good chef, I choose my potatoes wisely. Supermarket potatoes, oh, have you ever seen how they wash them? They basically soak them with water, bruise them, and then they wash them with detergents and so on. And if you buy unwashed potatoes, well, in most cases, they have been washed beforehand, and they just put the dirt back on. Anyway, oh, did I tell you they put the potatoes under gamma radiation so to stop them from sprouting too soon, you know? No? Okay, I just did. So potatoes like that from a supermarket are just not a good way to start with your mashed potatoes. But what is a good potato? Now, I will tell you that and show you that after this version, which is my favorite way of mashed potatoes for every day. So I only use organic potatoes for so many different reasons. The organic vegetables are denser, they're heavier, hence you will have a better flavor, a better starch, a better taste. Let's get cooking. First, wash the potatoes peel them and wash them again. No, 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 storing in water, just store them in a plastic bag or container, just make them a bit wet. That's all you need to do. Otherwise, you wash out the starch and the flavor during storage, okay? Great. Bring a steamer with water to the boil and cook the potatoes. This time you can cut them as small as you want because it doesn't matter because there's no exchange with water. The moisture you see on the potatoes is actually called film condensate and it's the water that comes out of the potatoes. You know, vegetables and fruits, when they are in contact with heat, they let their water go. So even if we steam those potatoes, they actually dry out. Isn't that great? You can also completely overcook them. And then the mashing process is actually much easier too. Now, when you cook them, you will see they are covered with a gloss-like shine, which is all the starch assembling on the surface. And that starch is so important later on as it will make your potatoes extra creamy. Then into a sieve and through a strainer, once for every day, twice to impress, and three times to serve it in a Michelin star restaurant. Why so often? Well, every time you put those mashed potatoes through the strainer, you break up the starch particles finer and finer, and the mashed potatoes become creamier, denser, and just people always think you added so much butter to it. No, it's the mashing that makes them so super creamy. Try it. Then butter, cream, and salt, and I'm not the biggest fan of milk. In my mash, as milk is full of water, no, 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 cream is just so much better. Mashed potatoes are actually really good for pre-cooking. They last in the fridge for up to a week to reheat them, heat a pan, add a little water or milk and then just stir them in like I do here and they will be hot again. Mashed potatoes like the best chefs in the world would cook it. I mean that process would literally start with total focus on the starting ingredients like the perfect potato. It needs to be in a season. It needs to be dry grown in a soil that's not too sandy and is really rich in acid and so on. No, this is not a farming session, but they need to have the right starch, so they should have been stored not too cold, not too dry, not too wet. So they shouldn't be older than 17 to 9 months, because during that time the starch transforms and start to sprout, and they should neither be bruised or washed, and so on, and on, and on, and on, and on. Can you see how a chef, by putting that much effort into ingredients, is already miles ahead of a home cook who gets the potatoes from the supermarket. I mean, there's the famous chef, Alan de Cassis, that it is better, far better, to combine a perfect piece of fish with a really bad chef or cook than combining a really good chef with a really bad piece of fish. He thinks the outcome will be better with the better fish and the worst chef. I think most chefs would agree on that. Okay, the next focus will be to get out all the water from the potatoes. And how do we do that? Is basically we bake them. We bake them on a low heat to keep a natural flavor, or you bake them on a high heat to get a baked potato flavored mash until then they are soft. Then peel them, then mash them two to three times as we did before. And 
And here we go. Cream, or in case you want to add a bit of milk, you can do that now, or olive oil. And now the stirring. Oh, the flavor, the texture. Now think about, actually, yeah, think about fresh tomatoes and sun-dried tomatoes. That's how intense the flavor is got in here. Now, it's just unreal good. I mean, the texture is incredible. And now, of course, I promised you the secret of all mashed potato secrets. There are two types of potatoes, floury and waxy. Flour ones have a drier starch, and during cooking, their starch cells swells and separate from each other. Okay, so they swell, they separate. And that develops a dry and fluffy texture like you see in a baked potatoes, for example. You know, in waxy potatoes, the starch cells cohere or stick to each other, resulting in a really dense and waxy texture. Hence, waxy potatoes never ever fall apart about during cooking, while floury or mealy potatoes do. Now the secret most chefs tell you is that waxy potatoes are no good for mashing and that's not true. Waxy potatoes are actually better because they have much more flavor. So they will always make nicer tasting mash. It's about the flavor. But what you need to do to turn them into mash is that they need further processing to separate the starch particles as they have chelated. The classic Paris or French mash is actually made from waxy potatoes and pressed through sieves several and several times. Then cream and butter is added and then they work and beat it to separate the starch particles even further to make it creamier and lighter. That's why the French say, stir your mashed potatoes till you get the dead arm. You see the beating and overworking does not work with the starchy potatoes as it turns them into a gluey, gooey mass because of the different starches. So, I hope this all makes sense to you. Try them out and let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. And please, please, please check out my video on French fries where you will see a totally different approach to achieve perfection in potatoes. And I hope you have a great day. Oh, fuck, you know, my arm hurts, seriously. No more French mashed potatoes. Ah. I'm getting too old for that.